all my alocasia and my best care tips on how to make them thrive. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hi, Editing Rose. The audio gets much better after about 20 seconds, so please bear with me, sorry. Or if you're new, my name is Rose. My pronouns are she, her. Ooh, the sun is coming out. And today we're gonna talk about alocasia. I hope you can correctly see me. It's a little bit more bright than I expected, but that is actually very fitting for today's video because alocasias like it more bright than you would think. I actually remember promising to make this video I think more than a year ago and people being excited for the tips and then all of my alocasias crumbled we're doing horrible we're not going at all we're looking very bad <laughs> and i've been kind of waiting for them to look a little bit better but now i decided this is also just reality of having alocasias they don't always look ideal so we're just gonna do it and we're gonna start with the thing i mentioned already alocasias love light i for myself have made a split between two different types of alocasias and this is not scientific at all this is something that came from my own experience and i've divided them into bigger alocasia like this is a michaelitiana mexkowski what we commonly call a fried egg this is the variegated version of that the yellow variegated version cupria watsoniana zebrina they all fall under the bigger alocasia label that i've invented <laughs> And things like the silver dragon, the dragon scale, all fall under the jewel alocasia label. They are generally a little bit smaller and they grow a little bit more compact as well. And in my experience, the bigger ones, since they grow bigger and faster, they need more water, more light. They need a little bit more of everything. And the jewel alocasias, they don't necessarily want that direct <laughs> sun in their face maybe for like an hour it's fine but not continuously like my other alocasias i give them a lot more light i even grew a zebrina outside in our greenhouse and it grew really really well so that's full sun throughout the whole day i wouldn't do that with my jewel alocasias if that makes sense i'm actually growing some of the jewel alocasias in my terrarium i'll show you later and they are at the bottom of the terrarium doing really well in a little bit higher humidity and a little bit less light i'm getting ahead of myself let's stay focused i have a little list so next is the medium and i actually used to grow all of them in soil i love growing stuff in soil generally like a nice airy chunky mix that i have a video about if you want to check it out but recently i started moving my alocasias into semi-hydro passive hydroponics like ceramis or this is a mix with perlite i have some in leca why are you hiding behind here you're very cute come to the front the big plants are still in soil but if they do fall back i am going to move them into semi-hydro as well mainly because i've struggled a lot with root rot and stem rot recently somehow in soil it can be too soggy sometimes and in semi-hydro i feel like it's easier to control and not make the roots too wet so that's why i'm trying this now this is a kind of a new thing that i decided a few months ago so it's not really tested out yet but i have tested with soil and i have had a lot of rot i will talk about all of these in a second <laughs> so talking about watering of course it totally depends on your conditions on your medium on the temperature like conditions is basically the temperature in your house the, the amount of light the season all those things so i can't say water once a week or something i actually love using a hygrometer i think it's called the, the measuring stick that you stick into the soil and then it will tell you how wet it is that does not work so well with semi-hydro though so i'll have to figure that out i have realized in growing these that especially in the growing season for the bigger section of alocasias they need a lot of water and also fertilizer regularly because they grow so fast and also they have guttation which you may have heard of is the dripping like the sweating of the leaves i have this with all my aeroids including philodendron monstera after i've watered they will drip little drips but alocasia especially are known to have this a lot and i've actually had them dripping into my laptop into onto my table onto my floor so you have to be a little bit careful if you have nice hardwood floors or if your expensive macbook is right underneath your plants like mine i do recommend being careful with watering because you can easily like i said get the soil too moist in a season that doesn't necessarily like it and then rot the roots and or the stem and or the whole plant which has happened several times for me this growing season unfortunately so that's why i love using the measuring stick especially now it's november now so the light is becoming less even though <laughs> 
it is not today. There's less hours of light, there's less warmth, especially in our very badly insulated house, it gets very cold. So the Hoya, even if you use grow lights, will know that there's a seasonal change and keep an extra eye on watering then. In general, I've noticed that a little bit higher humidity will help your Hoya. Hoya. Why am I talking about Hoya? You're definitely alocasia. In general, I have noticed that higher humidity can help your alocasia. So for example, the ones that are growing in my terrarium are in a higher humidity setting and they are growing really well, while the ones that I have out in my living room are struggling a little bit more, especially the jewel alocasia. Generally though, I wouldn't say they need high humidity, especially the bigger size plants, the bigger section of plants. I've had them in my living room the whole time or in my kitchen and I don't think they need higher humidity. Temperature, they definitely prefer a little bit warmer because they might go into dormancy if it gets colder, but I don't have heat mats or anything unless I'm trying to grow out the corms, which I'll get back to. It's really important to know that these plants in nature go into dormancy. So in fall, they'll start to lose their leaves. They'll go back into the ground, basically like a little stem, a corm it's called, and not grow until spring comes and then they'll regrow again. So even in your house, if you're having the perfect conditions with a grow light, for example, in my house, they will still notice that the temperature is going down. Or if you have them in natural light, even if it's a really sunny day like today, there will still be less hours of light. So the plant will notice and might just drop some leaves if you're lucky. Maybe it will drop all the leaves, then I would definitely check the roots and the stem for rot, but it can also just mean that it's going into dormancy. If your plant is going into dormancy, that's completely normal. Don't be mean to yourself. Also be careful with watering. I water them a little bit still. I don't let them dry out like caladiums, for example. I leave them in the soil or in the medium, a little bit of water every now and then, but not too much. Speaking of things that can happen in fall, maybe you can see it clearly on this plant. Leaves can be very, very droopy. See, this is even lower than the pot itself. There are several things that you can do. First of all, it's important to know that it doesn't mean your plant is not happy. It can either mean the leaves are too heavy for its stem because they grow quite fast and that you can help if you want with a little stick and some string or like a support to keep it upright. Or it can mean that one of those leaves is dying, which I actually also have an example of here on my beautiful yellow, <laughs> look at this. Okay guys, this is kind of normal. This yellow variegated alocasia, you can see this leaf here has even snapped a little bit. It's just on the way out. It's the oldest leaf on the stem, so it's not bad. I've noticed that with a light from the top, this is actually a little bit easier. Like my cupria here doesn't droop anymore since I have it underneath a skylight. But since I only have one skylight, I just pop them in a shelf and then actually all the leaves are facing forward so it fits better on the shelf anyway. So it's just making it work for your situation. Look at these beautiful variegated leaves, by the way. These are yellow variegated babies. The mama has kind of lost its variegation, but luckily the babies still have it. Oh, one more thing about this. If your alocasia is only able to keep one or like two or three leaves, when a new leaf comes out, the old one dies right away. That probably means that the plant doesn't have the ability to sustain more leaves, which can mean if you give it more light, maybe more fertilizer in the active growing season, or check the pot. If it's super root bound, it might want a little bit of a bigger pot. Of course, always check first if the plant has any pests, if the roots are happy, and if it's rotting, because that's crucial before you start to check those three points. If your plant is dropping all of its leaves, I would definitely recommend checking the roots because I've had this a lot this season. That's why you see all these very sad blobby things here. There can be root rot, which happened to this alocasia melo. The stem still looked fine, so I potted that up and I'm gonna have it grow back, hopefully. Unfortunately, sometimes the stem itself also has rot, and I've noticed that if that happens, it very quickly rots and basically disappears the whole plant and it smells horrible. So then what you can do is rescue the corms. This one has rooted, but I pulled it out for you. So alocasia, the stem itself is actually called a corm, which is some kind of bulb, but a different word for it. And then it also makes little baby corms along the side, which can regrow little plants. And if your main stem has rotted, you can take the little corms, pot them up separately and hope to regrow your plants. There's some tiny little alocasia dragon scale leaves coming out here. I've struggled a lot with this one. 
this year. Before that it was doing great, <laughs> but not anymore. That is a really nice option if your big plant has died. Like one of my favorites, Alocasia Jacqueline, actually died and the only thing I have left now are a lot of little corms. It had a bunch of corms. I put them in perlite here. I have them on a heat mat to give some warmth from below to help activate some root growth, hopefully in a high humidity closed environment. So that should hopefully help it to grow back, them to grow back. Possibly it will take a long time until next spring. Possibly it might not happen at all. Sometimes corms don't grow at all. One thing that I did see on Instagram, if you peel the corms, they might have a better chance of rooting and growing. So I haven't done that with these because <laughs> there were a lot of them and I was a little bit lazy, but you can soak them in a little bit of water, then take the, the little dried bits off and pot them up that way, might have better success. So the main thing that I want to say with this whole example is that rot with alocasias, unfortunately, is quite normal and it's not your fault, might be your fault, but it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> be nice to yourself. There are ways to recover it. And if not, you might have to get a little corm from your friend or buy a new plant, but it is normal and it's kind of, I've experienced part of having alocasia, unfortunately. One more thing that sucks about alocasia, <laughs> sorry guys, I love you, is that they really attract spider mites. Spider mites are little tiny mites that with eight legs, that's why they're called spider mites, I think. You can recognize them by webbing on your plant, but that means usually that it's gone pretty far already, the infestation. So I have a separate video identifying pests. If you wanna check that out here, you can see what they look like and the damage they create and all that. In general, it's good to check your leaves to see if you see any little crawlers. And I like to use as a preventative method as well, good bugs, good mites that will attack the bad mites. I currently don't have any spider mites, so fingers crossed. I feel like they are quite easy to treat because I use good bugs and I don't have to do anything. I just put the good bugs on and they will eat the bad bugs. But I do know from other friends that they hate spider mites and that they can be pretty tricky. One more thing that people often notice about alocasia is that they can have variegation. So there can be, of course, this is a variegated zebrina. So of course it has variegation on on every leaf. But what happens sometimes is that a leaf will get a little spot of variegation, like on this cupria, and people will think it is a variegated plant. No. Alocasia are very easy to have just a little spot. If you walk in a garden center and you check the Zebrina aisle, you probably might find a variegated spot on a leaf. This little spot does not mean that it's a variegated plant, unfortunately. So it's very cool to see, but it doesn't mean that this plant is now worth anything more than it was or that it's a variegated plant. I just wanted to say that. And while we're at that, remember that if you have a slightly variegated plant, the corms that it put out there's a very low chance that they are actually variegated. Unless you have a very high quality, always very nicely variegated in every leaf plant, then it can be that the corms have more of a chance of being variegated. My friend Anz, she had 14 corms of her variegated Zebrina and four of those were variegated and the other 10 were not. They were just green plants. So I see a lot of people buying little corms. I feel like variegated alocasia are very, in demand right now, I would say wait until there's some leaves and you actually see variegation. There is a very small chance they are actually variegated. The sun is gone, bright indirect light. <laughs> it's very actually good to use a light meter for your situation. So in every season I grab my light meter and I generally give my plants a lot of light. I know this, I have a big south facing window. I've noticed they grow a lot better if I give them more light. So that's the most important things that I want you to know about alocasias. We're now gonna look at some of my plants up close. But remember that it's normal to have issues with them. They are not easy plants, but I think they are absolutely worth it. They are stunning. And when they do grow, they, they are so satisfying and so beautiful, especially Watsoniana is my current favorite. This ninja has shimmers in the velvet leaf. It's like a crystallinum. They're all so cool. <laughs> okay, let's just look at them up close. Here's a little overview of all the plants that I currently have. I will go to the terrarium later to show you the last few. Let's start over here. So this is one of my Alocasia Watsoniana. It's almost hard to, ah! shoot. Okay, I hate semi-hydro. <laughs> At least it's growing new roots so we can see. Okay, Friedek, stay. Watsoniana. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're just gonna continue and ignore the chaos. This leaf actually looks a little bit dusty, which can be a sign of spider mites, but it also is an old leaf and it's hanging. Oh, one thing that I didn't mention, at the end of the growing season, your leaves can actually become a lot smaller. Look at this. This was the last leaf. And now these are the new leaves, but it's going to be a big again in spring from my experience. It's still actively growing leaves though. If you have dots like this, it can be a sign of pests as well, but I'm not worried because I use the good bugs. That's what the orange bags are. Good bugs that eat any bad bugs that might show up. Wait, I just have to clean this mess so I can sit here and not hurt myself. Allocasia ninja is really hard to capture how velvet it is. So maybe I should try and get some sunlight on there. These leaves are super shiny and velvet and the newer leaves come in a little bit more green. There's silver in these veins, which is also hard to capture. It's a very fun one and I've ignored it a lot. It's quite dry right now, but that's how I like to grow my alocasias in fall, keeping them quite dry as to not rot. In the back here is my other Watsoniana. Look at how beautiful that is. And again, this one has a few babies and a few smaller leaves in the back as well, but it's still going strong. Up here, Alocasia zebrina. This one has been less variegated than what it used to be. This leaf is okay. This leaf is fully green. There's two plants in here and both of them have been less variegated than what I would like. This is one of the older leaves that still had nice yellow variegation. But yeah, I hope in spring it will come back. At least it still looks happy. Nothing is hanging yet. See, they're quite high up because this is right in my south facing window. Excuse the mess. Back here, <laughs> my Alocasia cupria, which this is the pink part that I was mentioning. You see here, there is some damage on these new leaves and that probably means that there is a pest. To me, it looks like thrips damage, but I'm not 100% sure. I have not seen any active bugs, but also I'm not too worried about it because I use the good bugs. This is one of my oldest alocasias. There's a lot of plants in this pot. Look at this cute little baby over here see the old stems. I actually really don't like it when alocasia become this tall. I usually repot them to here so that this whole bit is under the ground. And that also means that these little blobs can become little corms so that it can continue growing little babies for me. But I've honestly, I've ignored this plant a little bit too much because it's in a different spot and it's been doing well, even though I ignore it, except the pest damage, but okay. This in spring, I probably will repot and then make it deeper into the soil. Over here is my leftovers from my dragon skill. So my dragon skill rotted earlier, I think last year and looked horrible. So I rescued the corms and the corms regrew, but also have been struggling. So it doesn't look ideal. It's tiny, it's dusty because my house is dusty, <laughs> but it's still alive. So. I have high hopes for those. Here's some more dragon scale corms. These were the babies that I was chatting about earlier. Back here is Alocasia melo, I think. This is the one that unfortunately was not doing well before, but it's gonna come back, I'm sure. I think it's melo. it has a question mark because <laughs> it had zero leaves when I rescued it. This one I really love as well. This is Alocasia green shield, I think it's called, Clipiolata. And I regrew it from fully rotted roots after I got it from Indonesia. It's growing, but not doing super well. Also, it seems to not want to focus. It's a little bit better. It's very pretty, but it keeps one leaf right now. So it hopefully will come back in spring. Back here is a pile of corms that I'm <laughs> rescuing. Also some dead leaves, because I wanted to show you that that is normal. And yeah, these are just on a heat mat, closed off at the top to keep higher humidity to hopefully activate some growth. Then in the front here, we have a little dragon scale that's actually looking pretty good. And this was a <laughs> black velvet. As you can see, it's not looking good. I rescued these recently. They were regrowing and then they were dying again. So I removed them from the pot. They had some root rot. Now they are in it together. Oh, here's another spot of variegation, by the way. So this just happens on these leaves. It's like a little damage, a little scar. And this is the naughty fry deck plug plant that I got that just fell over. <laughs> it was in a little plug that I didn't want to remove because I thought it would damage the roots, but I put it in semi-hydro around it to hopefully make sure that it doesn't rot any further. But yeah, this needs to be fixed after I finish filming. <laughs> oh no! 
Okay, welcome in my life. It's chaos here. Stay. Mother. Okay, no swearing. Lastly, on this table is my yellow variegated fry deck. This mother plant used to have variegation, but as you can see, maybe there's hardly any on it now. The new leaf, again, is quite a lot smaller than the regular leaves. But luckily, there are two babies in the pot that do have nice variegation on all the leaves. Look at this one. Really nice, consistent variegation. This one has even more. It's beautiful, velvet, yellow. I love it. So the two baby ones here are the most promising, but I also love the just the general normal one. <laughs> if it's not variegated, I still love it. I just realized I completely forgot my beautiful alocasia aslani which also had root rot earlier in the year and I put in a high humidity environment with semi-hydro and it grew back! It grew two beautiful leaves. If you don't know this one, it's very cool with like pink veins and a neon green outline. I really really like this plant. This is sitting right next to me at my desk, so that's why I forgot it. In a very cute pot by Natalie from Piece of Clay. Yay! Okay, let's look at the terrarium. Because in here, look at this little baby. We have a little silver dragon that has been doing really well since I potted it in here. It's making new leaves. It looks a little bit damaged, but that's probably because I had thrips in here before. And there's a lot of leaves on this plant as well. So I think it just likes the higher humidity, not too much light setting. This is one of the jewel orchids, so that makes sense. And then over there we have a black velvet in the same setting, also loving life a lot more than my other one in a little pot. Here's a new leaf coming out. Ooh, I'm gonna damage it probably, but I wanna show you. Look at that. Now, generally in this terrarium, I've had a lot of issues with bugs, bad bugs, as you can see by all the damage on these poor plants. So that's normal for them to look a little bit more horrible here as well. You can see all the thrips damage on this little Visia, but it's looking better now. The new leaves are less damaged. So I have high hopes for this baby. And like I said in another video, I am gonna make a separate video about the terrarium, redoing it, potting in a lot of new plants because it needs an overhaul. So that's coming up as well. But that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. I noticed about 75% of you are not subscribed. So hi, I would really like it. <laughs> I tried to make this video include all the topics, but I always forget something. So please let me know in the comments if you have any more questions or you want any advice. I hope this was helpful. I hope my alocasia will do better next year because this was a pretty shit year, but I still love them a lot. And I hope you do too. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, why am I talking so fast? This alocasia, Michaelina. <laughs> I hope it's okay.